may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Welcome back to the channel, share, subscribe, like this video, make sure you put your prayer requests in the bottom. Ladies and gentlemen, today could be a wild day. I don't know this for probably, I don't know if this could be the last video I did today. we got some very severe storms coming. And if you're in Tennessee, Illinois, and Ohio, and different places, it's, gonna, it's probably going to be a very rough day. Kentucky, uh, Virginia, and many other places. Now here, it's supposed to get really bad any time now. So I'm headed my way to work. Uh, if we don't get in on any more videos today, you know I have no power. Okay, I'll be fine. I've got air. Like I said, I've got backup for backup. So I won't. I won't be able to do internet. But I will literally. I'll be fine. Uh, this location I'm at is. We've had some pretty bad storms come through here. We haven't seen anything like this. I don't think. And hopefully, we just keep everybody in our prayers. These storms just kind of die out and lose their intensity what we need to be doing today now late last night Iran came out pretty much blaming us for what happened with Israel because we're we're in with Israel as they would say and they said that they're holding us responsible for what happened also there's news coming out of Ukraine that there's plenty of places that are literally picking up everything in the in the towns and cities, I think close to the Russian border that have not been taken by Russia, they're evacuating. Now there's a lot of things happening, very clearly. There is a lot going on right now. It's almost too much to even comprehend. With everything that's coming with April the eighth, and so on and so on. There's just a lot of things happening around the world. And I do believe we're getting closer and closer to the rapture and huge events taking place while the rest of the world sleeps and has no clue what's happening. They're about to get a wake up call that it's going to be disturbing. We've warned people and warned people that these days was coming and they're here now. They're coming. Everything we've been warning about for years is coming one thing after another now I found an article on CERN that we're going to talk about and uh, this I got this from a, a place I just I just found this uh, American media group but uh, they had some interesting stuff and uh, we might go down a couple rabbit holes with this but we all need to learn I didn't know much about CERN and I read on a little bit about them. It says the world is biblical the ominous Omnius, Nexus, CERN, Total Eclipse, and the Impending Apocalypse. So, like I said, sit down this morning and we'll go down the rabbit hole together and see what it says. What if I told you that the world is teetering on the brink of an apocalypse? We all know that because the tribulation's coming. Well, science and mythology collide in a cataclysmic dance of destruction and rebirth. Welcome to the uh, amatic realm of CERN where the line between scientific exploration and spiritual reckoning blurs out into absurdity. Let's see. So it's starting. A European organization the new, for nuclear research stands as a beacon of scientific achievement on the surface. Yet beneath is a facade lies in a labyrinth of intrigue and mystery. As the world awaits its concernment of the latest experimentations uh, on April the 8th, which we told you they're going to reopen it on that day. A day ominously aligned with the solar eclipse of uh, uh, 
reminiscent of biblical prophecies, one cannot help but one question the true natures of their, their pursuit. Says the Shiva connection. At the heart of CERN, controversy lies is the angelic figure of Shiva, the Hindu deity of destruction. Stanley pr standing proudly at the entrance of the statue depicting the formid formidable entity invoking both awe and trepidation. But what does Shiva, the harbinger of destruction, have to do with particle physics? The answer lies in the symbolism of creation and destruction, a motif woven into the fabric of existence itself. The Threads of Revelation In the tapestry of the Bible prophecy, the book of Revelation looms large, casting its shadow over the events unfolding at CERN. Revelation 9 speaks of locust-like creatures emerging from a bottomless pit, led by the king known as Abaddon, or Apollyon, the destroyer. Could it be more mere coincidence that CERN is situated beneath the ancient temple dedicated to this very entity? Go figure that. Or is there a darker agenda at play, hidden from the prying eyes of the world? The portal to the underworld. What if I told you CERN's true purpose is not to merely unlock the secrets of the universe, not to breach the barriers between dimensions? It may sound like a plot of a science fiction novel, but the evidence speaks for itself. From their logo bearing the infamous number 666 to the explicit reference to opening other dimensions, CERN seems poised to usher in a new scientific discovery of unleashed forces beyond our comprehension. As the countdown to CERN's experimentation tricks ticks even closer, a sense of unease pervades the air. The convergence of scientific ambition and ancient mythologies paint a chilling picture of what lies ahead. Are we on the cusp of a new age of an alignment? No, we're on the cusp of the rapture of the church. And it says we are catering towards a new, our own destruction. The choice lies in the hands of humanity. But time is running out more than what they know. The call of salvation, the face of impeding tribulation. There is but one beacon of hope, salvation, and that's through Christ. While the world grapples with uncertainty and fear, the promise of redemption shines bright. It's not too late to turn away from the path of destruction and embrace the light of the truth, which is what we say, get on the boat. Let us heed the warning signs and seek refuge in the arms of the divine grace for the end. As the world braces for the collision of science and spirituality, one thing remains clear. The truth cannot be concealed forever. Whatever CERN heralds the dawn of a new era, or the onset of an apocalypse, only time will tell. But one thing is for certain, the world is biblical, and the stakes have never been higher. Will we heed the warning signs? Will we be consumed by the darkness that lurks within? The choice is ours to make, but we'll choose wisely. For the fate of humanity hangs in the balance. We already know what happens to humanity. The Bible already tells us. In the shadowy realm where science meets mythology, CERN stands as a testament to humanity's insatiable curiosity and its boundless, co boundless capacity for both creation and destruction. As the world watches with bated breath, the stage is set for a confrontation of biblical proportions. Will we unlock the secrets of the universe, or will we unleash the forces beyond our control? The answer lies in the heart of the abyss waiting to be discovered. CERN, where science and supernatural collide. CERN, the large heart and collider and supernatural, these are strange convergence between modern science and ancient gods of the old world. What is really going on? Could it be just a big coincidence? I sat down with Dr. Thomas Horn and asked him to share his thoughts on the opinions regarding what's going on at CERN and the strange connection with the uh, God hard tunnel of fallen angels, the Bible and ancient ones in the video. Tom Horn shared his unique perspective on CERN Laboratory, where science and supernatural collide. Tom Horn, which I lo love to listen to, is an author, filmmaker, and speaker of unique perspectives of the CERN Laboratory. CERN is where scientists work on some of the most cutting-edge research in the world. In Tom's upcoming uh, documentary, The End Times Production, which I love, I watched it, uh, goes into more detail on this. So, what we're thinking with them trying to open a portal, that that is literally what they're trying to do. And they might be trying to open it on the day of April the 8th. 
that could be exactly what they're doing. And it's funny that little scholar was talking about this, about a gate. And the last time he did that, we had the incident which happened in Miami. So that's that kind of got my ears, you know, and my eyes going a little bit toward I started doing some research that this could be what they're trying to do. They're trying to open a main portal that would literally be like a portal to hell, basically. Could be what they're doing. There's different other things that they're talking about that could possibly be happening also on April the 8th. What I will tell you guys is to be careful on that day. There's a reason why God keeps showing us that day. And it's not good. Whatever's going to happen on that day is not good. Listen to me very clearly. Not only does it mark an X on America, but people, there's something sinister behind it. I really do believe that. I believe something is getting ready to happen. I don't know what it is. But for God to warn me over five times about this event, it's not something good. There's a lot happening. And I do mean a lot. Now I want to read this. It says, The Biden administration's war against government of Israel. It says, The war rages on in the Gaza Strip, northern Israel, Lebanon, Elliot, and the other streets of Israel's cities in Iran, Palestine, Lebanese, Syria, Iraq, and Yemen proxies maintain to escalate their operations against the Jewish state. Unmoved by the state of affairs, Israel is left by the reinstatement of anti-government riots that occurred regularly through the three quarters of 2023. The new round of leftist politician violence began officially on Saturday night in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem in the first of what has been billed as four days of protest, as was the case of this anti-government protest before Hamas invasion of a one-day holocaust in southern Israel on October the 7th. In the current round, demonstrations are followed by riots in which few dozen participate. See, this, this leftist movement, which has destroyed America, is people that believe that we need to go back to basically a communism or a communist state. These people don't believe in freedom. You have no freedom of speech. That the government rules over everything. They tell you when you can buy stuff, when you can go to use the bathroom. That's what these people want. And it's never worked. These countries always fall. And either that or they're just basically a jail country to where you're just in prison. Look at the Chinese. Those poor people can't do anything. If you do anything wrong, say anything wrong, you can't even buy groceries. This is the same system that Satan will usher in under the Antichrist, this socialist government. It'll be worse. But that's what this is. This is a prelude to it. As before, riots feature bonfires along with major traffic, arteries, assaults on police and ultra-Orthodox Jews, threats to murder Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, storming police barricades protesting the Premier's home. They also involve in massive aggravations uh, of numbers, see, massive numbers of protesters on Sunday night in Jerusalem. For instance, organizers proclaimed the participation of 100,000 protesters but aerial photographs of the event indicate that the most a tenth of that number showed up. It says before October 7th, riders demand the overthrow of the government due to an anti-democratic policy of corruption. The new rallying cry uh, is to free hostages. On Saturday night, relatives of 10 to 134 hostages declared to return our loved ones, and we have decided to work in service of Hamas. We are demanding that Israel's government accept the organization's demands. Immediately, if not, we'll burn the country down. These poor people. But see, we have that here. See, they believe that you can you can just, you know, hold hands and sing Kumbaya with your enemy. And that's what's caused all this mess, believe it or not. That thought that you can be friends with North Korea, China, Russia, dictators. These people only see one thing, and that's weakness. People hated Trump for that, because Trump was not in fear of these people. He wasn't trying to hold hands with them and jump, do jumping jacks. What he done is he, he stood up to them and scared them. Biden makes these people laugh. 
and they want it. They know that America can be destroyed under his leadership because they're weak. Dictators see weakness differently. You can't be weak around these people because Lucifer will spit you out of his mouth real quick. He'll suck you up and then spit you out. And that's what we're seeing. God let these people get what they wanted. This type of governments around the world. He wanted them to see what it leads to. And now they're about to. Be sure the number of reasons this is happening, but perhaps the main one is revealed on March 17th by the right leader, Amar Deer. The WhatsApp group chat with his colleagues, the communication withdrawer, authorized an interview with Channel 14 and reported that by on X by a post, uh, poster who operates under the handle Tuna Hunter. Go figure that one. In the communication drawer, told the colleagues that the White House was asking them to reinstate the rights. So our government is paying for the rights against the government of Israel. Because they want it to be a two-state solution. Now they can lie to you and they can lie to us in the press, but the one person they can't lie to is God. He knows who's behind this. That's why an ex is being formed on April the 8th. He knows what our government's doing. Do you know that the World Economic Forum today, just a side note, decided that the LGBTQ, whatever the heck it's called, I don't really care, they wanted to put a P at the end of it. Do you know what that P stands for? Pedophilia. To be added to that name. Because they, I'm telling you, wanted to be legalized. I've told you they was working on that in our side of our own government. Trying to get this passed. No more warnings. No more little lists that you'll know where they're at. And it'll be legal if they get caught. That is going on in our government. As we speak. People, I'm telling you. You better wake up. Because this is the end of days. Dreyer called the airport an important update for the American administration. He explained that this update followed by an earlier the text that was sent on March the 6th. Same topic, the American plan, as I published it on March the 6th, remains unchanged. The day after my publication, the Biden administration announced that the uh, establishment of the American port in Gaza will see will seize from Israel the ability to rule the the strip uh, the strip the port will be used initially to provide food, but the central purpose of the port will be rebuild Gaza without Israel's. Basically anything that Israel has planned, they're going to go against it. The purpose of the U.S. campaign for humanity explained was twofold, undermining the control of Israel's defense forces in Gaza and blackmailing government ministers. That's our country doing that against God's country. Buckle up, people. It's about to get bad. In the words, government ministers are receiving messages from American friends. They will be accused of war crimes under our radar. The U.S. and EU have framed the hunger in northern Gaza as a war crime. This is an excuse for seizing control over the territory from Israel. Participating food continuously, including by the German military, and a building a port, but the words of potential indictment of all members of the government or destruction is the clincher. How does it work? There are many members of the government that don't want to lose their physical or economic freedom. The imminent targets the billionaire economy minister near Barkett by freezing assets and turning the millionaire into a wanted man. And Hurdy's parties, they are a community worldwide have many properties. Ministers in the government will become potential fugitives if they're not able to Enable the formation of the government without Kahinstas. Don't be surprised if Shaz party leader Aria Dari, wow, these names, Agadist, Israel head minister, uh, Gold of something brings down the government soon. The, the Herdy daft is just an excuse. Their Herdy cronies in America don't want to get in trouble with Uncle Sam. 
as for the United Nations 10 days before the administration abstained from the vote for a Chinese and Russian sponsored resolution for an immediate ceasefire not conditioned on the release of the hostages. Dreyer wrote the United States insists to pass a resolution in the US, UN Security Council that calls for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. The draft resolution has already been published and is being used as a means to pressure the government to prevent it from undermining a hostage deal on Hamas terms. If Netanyahu agrees to the deal, which will effectively involve strategic defeat and war, National Security Minister Tamar Ben-Gur will have to leave the government. If he doesn't, he will lose most of his supporters. In this case, the government will survive and the dependent, dependent on Benny Gantz and Gader Saar it will be easy to expand the government to include Yay and Leopard and all these other names to transport it into a government controlled by the political left. That is their plan. This administration preferred that option. If Netanyahu rejects the hostage deal in the next 10 days, the Security Council will approve the U.S. draft, or even worse, a different draft that the U.S. will not veto. Let me do the math on that. So that is, they're saying, let's see, the administration's preferred option to reject the hostage deal in the next 10 days. Let's do the math on that. That would have been, this came out, I think, late last night. One, two, three, four, five, six. That would be the 10th of this month, right after the eclipse. Tell me God's always on time. He knew all this was going to happen. That's why that X is formed. After six weeks, he had promised by that by January 1st they would deliver the goods. And in practice, the final deadline for Americans gave him was Ramadan. Then we didn't deliver. The U.S. administration understood that they can't trust Gantz. Maybe he'll be comfortable, uh, comfortable prime minister in the future, but the Americans seize full control over the management of the war against Netanyahu. We are sick of, sick of the threat from the extremists. Now that Gantz is out of the game, Dror said that the administration is moving the center of the gravity to Dror and his followers' riot chiefs. And the most important thing, the U.S. and President Biden request from U.S., the American method is dealing with misbehaving states, including the, the destruction, economic and legal, that is centered on the leadership on one hand and driving a wedge between the nation and the leadership in the other. In our case, for this to work, the nation of Israel must show in the streets that it's fighting the, the leadership, the American administration needs to see the nation of Israel fighting the government of Israel. Buckle up, people. America's doomed. The new slogan of the protest, he said, must be hostages. The most urgent task is the return of the hostages, and the way to return the hostages is replacing the government, setting a date for elections now. Oh, boy. This government's about to get a wake-up call that they have never seen. Oh, my God. Last week in a Zoom meeting, the progressive American Jews reported on Channel 14, Dwar heralded a loss of Israel sovereignty to the White House. He said that he prefers to be an American colony that has uh, have the Israel's right in power. So far, the new protests have done more to turn the public against Dwar and his comrades then against the government. Moments after the demonstration began in Tel Aviv, students went out from hostage families that were relatives calling for protest to burn down the country. Do not respect them. The media, which had tried to prevent the families of 10 to 134 hostages of the hostage families, were forced to acknowledge that they represented a tiny fraction of the families. Uh, parents of the soldiers also began to speak out in short order and to a great effect. One of the prominent statements came from the Hagar Luva, whose son, Yotam, was killed in the Battle of Gaza in late December. He wrote, no one is going to burn down our country. We are sick of the threats of from these extremists, the crazy left. Yes, even when the extremists have relatives in Gaza, you will now not burn the country. This will not happen. And, and if fighting is, let's see, and if fighting you is required, I will fight you. Millions of people are looking at you in disbelief, and only because of your suffering they are silent. But I will not be silent. My son was killed in Gaza. He went to defend and rescue our children and was killed. He left everything. He left pregnant wife and nine-month baby and was killed. He will never come back again. No agreement will bring him back, and so I have the right to tell you, 
you may not tear apart the country. Gerard boasts that the close ties to the White House may or may not be empty. But what is clear enough is that the people of Israel, while deeply sympathetic to the fate of the hostages, will not be taken for a ride and will not allow the state of Israel to be driven into political chaos. The riot leaders and administration may well believe that the enemy is the Israel government, and that's our government making that happen. Understand this. We're the ones behind this. It says it. The, but the Israeli public isn't buying it. On October 7th, the people's eyes were open and will not be closing anytime soon. Israel is waging a war and will continue to wage the war against its actual enemies, Hamas, Hezbollah, and the puppet master Iran, until victory. Our government is undermining God's country and trying to take it over. That's why God put that X there. That's why it's all there. It becomes more and more clear why this is happening every day. We're on Revelation 19, I do believe, today. I hope that's where we're at. It says, After these things, I heard a great voice and much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the, the Lord our God. For true and righteousness are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did, not, which did corrupt the earth and the fornication, and have avenged the blood of her servants in her hand. And again he said, Hallelujah, and her smoke rose up and ever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God and sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And the voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise God and all his servants, and to fear him, and both shall be great. And I heard it in a voice of a great multitude, as the voice of many waters, and the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God uh, reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and the wife hath made him herself, our, herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arraigned in fine linen, clean and white, and the fine linen is righteousness of saints. And they said unto me, White, blessed are these what which are called the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, They are saying uh, of God, and I fell to the feet and worship him. And he said unto me, See thou it do is not, and I am a fellow servant, and the brethren that have testimony of Jesus, worship God, the testimony of Jesus, is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven open, behold a white horse, and they sat upon the horse, it was called Faithful and True, and the righteousness he doth judge and make war. In his eyes there was a flame of fire, and in his head were many crowns, and he had name written that no man knew but himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. And the armies that were in heaven followed him upon the white horses, clothed in fine fine linen, white and clean. And out of the mouth goeth a sharp sword, that his sharp should smite the nations, and shall rule them with a rod of iron. We're talking about the millennial reign. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. And he hath, hath and he hath on his vesture and hath thy name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, To all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourself together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and all them that sit upon them, and all the flesh of men, both free and bond, and both small and great. And I saw a beast and the kings of earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him and set on the horse and against his army. We are his army that comes down with him. And the beast was taken and with him a false prophet that wrote miracles before him with which to deceive them had received the mark of the beast. And them that worshipped his image, these both are cast alive in the lake of fire burning in brimstone. And the remnant, remnant were slain, the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all thousand were filled with their flesh. That is the war of Armageddon. So that is Revelation 19 that we read just there. So like I said, we're, we're doing this each and every day. And we're almost finished up with Revelation. We've been doing it now for a while. And I'm, I really appreciate everybody being here to do it every, each and every morning. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we see another day has come, and we see everything starting to unfold before our eyes. 
We have gotten each and every warning that you have given us, and we see it coming. I ask of you, Lord, to put a shield around all the watchmen and watchwomen around the world in these dark days that are coming. Protect them and their families in these last days, in Jesus' name. I ask of you, Lord, to watch over Israel. We know that Jacob's trouble is in any time, and we see it building all around her. We see all these nations coming against her. Be with her. We know what's to come for them. Just always comfort them, Lord, and be with them in Jesus' name. As we, Lord, watch over the homeless, the sick, and the needy in these dark days before the rapture. Be with them, Lord, that they find what they need in Jesus' name. As we, I pray, Lord, protection of the innocent around the world in these dark days. War is breaking out in every corner of this planet. We see World War III, Psalms 83 war, and many others brewing before our very eyes. Even the future of the Gog and Magog war is already starting to take shape. We see this through our pro the prophecies that you left for us, and we know that the tribulation is any day. We thank you, Lord, for being awake to be able to see these things, and we are ready to go home. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for all the ones that come against the channel, and everything that come against me, I pray for their souls, Lord, that you lighten their hearts before we leave here in Jesus' name. I ask of you, Lord, to watch over all the ones that come against this channel to get their people, their families, and their friends prayed for you know each and every soul that's why you had us do it you see them each and every day i pray lord and i know with all the faith i have they will all be saved before we leave thank you lord jesus for all that you do thank you for putting a roof over our heads and food on our tables in jesus name i pray amen i want to thank each and every one of you for always bringing me here make sure i want to thank you all for all the support all the ones who bought me coffee last night, God bless each and every one of you. You all was amazing last night. All the support you give for the channel helps us support others. God bless each and every one of you for that. All the ones who bought the super stickers, everything. Keep us all in your prayers today. Like I said, these are severe storms, and they could be really bad. So definitely keep us all in your prayers. If you don't see me the rest of the day, that's because I probably have no power. So hopefully... I can get some more programs on. I do hope I can. But if not, that is why. So just keep me in your prayers and everybody else in these areas where these storms are coming. Because there is a storm coming. And the rapture is coming very, very soon. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven. Thank you once again for tuning in to Global Rapture Watchers, where we do daily updates here on YouTube, letting you know that we're one day closer to our Lord and Savior coming back. Thank you for all the support for this channel. This channel was created for God's sheep, those that are waiting for their Lord and Savior to come back and get us in these last days. We do updates once to two times a day here on YouTube. Thank you for all your support for the channel. God bless each and every one of you.